Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we move away from Pulaski County, Arkansas and back to Catoosa and Walker Counties in Georgia for the Bloody Battle of Chickamauga. This occurred on September 18th to the 20th, 1863. The attacking Union forces were led by Union Major General William Rosecrans, who as a child did not have access to schooling and instead taught himself by reading until he could convince U.S. Congressman Alexander Harper to give Rosecrans the spot that Harper was going to give his own son in the United States Military Academy. Rosecrans was commanding the Union Army of the Cumberland along with more than 60,000 soldiers. Defending against the Union attack was our returning contestant, Confederate Major General Braxton Bragg, who was a lifer in the Union Army until the Civil War when he resigned his commission. Bragg was known to be a short-tempered and unimaginative commander with a penchant for blaming others and poor interpersonal skills. He was leading 65,000 Confederate soldiers that were part of the Army of Tennessee. The victor today, if there truly was one with the amount of losses, the Confederates under the command of Braxton Bragg and his army, the Tennessee. Once again, we are talking about a very large battle with an extensive bibliography dedicated to it. This channel is not able to provide the detail you should probably know, so we would recommend further reading to anyone interested. The purpose of the Union General Rosecrans' invasion of Georgia was to capture the town of Chattanooga, which was central location for the railway in Georgia itself. Rosecrans had successfully moved the largest portion of his troops into Georgia using the previous battles mentioned to distract the Confederate troops. Dividing his army into three columns, he outflanked Bragg and took Chattanooga on September 8th without firing a shot. Believing Bragg was retreating, Rosecrans did not follow but stayed at Chattanooga. After the battles of Davis Crossroads and Bayou Forge, Rosecrans realized that Bragg was not gone and was coming back. So Rosecrans ordered his troops to meet at Chattanooga. The timing for the Union was advantageous though, as Union Major General Alexander McCook's 20th Corps and General George H. Thomas's 14th Corps were able to reach Rosecrans by September 17th. There they were joined by General Thomas L. Crittenden's 21st Corps on the 18th as Bragg and his Confederate troops attacked. The fighting was hot but confused. Bragg was not aware that Crittenden's flanking troops were not actually Rosecrans' main force. Even so, Bragg's troops were able to reach the western bank of the Chickamauga Creek and camped for the night. Neither side realized the other had major forces right next to each other, and when Union Major Major General Gordon Granger's reserves attempted to destroy Reed Bridge They came across Confederate General Johnson's rear guard at Jay's Mill. The Union immediately believed the Confederates were only a single brigade on their side of the creek and decided they should destroy the Confederates immediately. So on the morning of September 19th, Union General Thomas sent Union Brigadier General John Brennan and his division into the forest to destroy that brigade. Battle was joined and neither side really understood for that day the size of the forces opposing them. Meanwhile, both Union General Rosecrans and Confederate General Bragg just fed reinforcements into the forest for the entire day without ever shifting either side's plan. While the specific movements and details of the fight are far too much for this video, the battle was a constant state of both sides sending reinforcements into the woods that had less than a 150 yard line of sight. This means any time forces met each other was well within range of weapons and would be hot and deadly. The night of September 19th, Union General Rosecrans strengthened his lines with log breastworks in order to have a better defensive coordination the next day. Unfortunately for Rosecrans, Confederate Lieutenant General James Longstreet arrived and Bragg was able to reorganize himself with more men. The Confederates attacked four hours later and pushed forward. The terrain was still so close that neither side could truly see the detail of the enemy forces moving against them. The result of the Union lines breaking in the morning of the 20th was due to miscommunication and a misunderstanding of how the battle was progressing. Rosecrans mistakenly thought there was a gap in the Union right center when there wasn't, and ordered Union Brigadier General Thomas Wood's division to move from their place in the line to the new area, leaving an actual gap in the Union line when there had never been one before. Confederate General Hood's Corps took advantage of this hole and drove through it, crumbling the Union positions on either side of the hole. The Union fought valiantly at multiple places to try and stem the break, but by the end of the day, Union General Rosecrans was forced to draw back to Chattanooga. The day ended and the battle was over. The ferryman's toll for two days of fighting was bigger than any other Civil War battle except for Gettysburg. Union losses were more than 16,170 casualties for two days, consisting of at least 1,657 dead, 9,756 wounded, and more than 4,757 captured or missing. The Confederates may have won the battle, but their losses were equivalent and they were not able to replace those losses like the Union. More than 18,454 Confederate casualties with at least 2,312 dead, 14,674 wounded, and more than 1,468 captured or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.